Sigma Tiger all up in your grill with the hottest, juiciest beef online. What do we got today? Cancer Mysteries. Ooh, Bocox, the worst vet and complete Canadian idiots. <laughs> Welcome to Sigma Tiger News, the hottest, juiciest beef online. Let's go ahead, let's dive right in. Princess of Wales, you know, diagnosed with cancer, reveals that her diagnosis, she went in for some abdominal surgeries and uh, came out and the doctors were like, don't like what we've seen in there. Uh, so now doctors all around the world are warning of mysterious cancer epidemic. What could be causing this, I wonder? Uh, the disease is affecting fit, younger people more often and researchers do not yet understand why. And uh, we covered this actually uh, a few months ago, the uh, onset of uh, young people in their 20s presenting colon cancers in stage four or stage two and progressing to stage four very quickly, like within a couple of months. Leading doctors have warned of a mysterious new epidemic of abdominal cancers in younger people. Following the Prince of Wales announcement of her diagnosis on Friday, specialists clinicians have said that in recent years they have seen a significant increase in under 45s presenting with cancers typically seen in older patients many are fit and outwardly healthy prompting a scramble among scientists to establish what is causing the trend one study that took the data from northern ireland between 93 and 2019 found the rate of early onset cancers increased by 20.5 percent the equivalent of about 7,000 extra cases a year across the uk these cancers include those that come under the umbrella of term abdominal the princess has not revealed what type of cancer she is receiving treatment for however her statement on friday said it was discovered following abdominal surgery in january you know inference uh, they're not thinking about cancer Prof. Andrew Beggs, a consultant, uh, collectoral surgeon, and senior clinical fellow at the University of Birmingham, runs a clinic for cancer patients under the age of 45. When I started as a cancer surgeon 20 years ago, you rarely saw any younger patients, but now I see them regularly. So what's going on in the past 20 years? Food has changed, potentially. Maybe things they're putting in food, or uh, how they're growing food, or, uh, you know things they're putting on the uh, crops, perhaps, I don't know. I mean, pesticides, insecticides, all those things have been known to be uh, carcinogenic. So, you know, what's going on? When they turn up, they're shocked because often they haven't had any symptoms and because of their age, they're not thinking about cancer. It's a huge thing to get your head around at that age. And of course, many have young children, he added. My thoughts are with Kate and her family. It must've hit them like a boss, absolutely. Uh, there's significant confusion uh, among research as to what might be causing the trend, although most agree it is unlikely to be down to a single factor. <laughs> Some scientists believe that uh, cause may be partly genetic. Of course, yeah. So over the past 20 years, our genes have changed so much so. So like all the new kids, all the millennials, whatever their parents did and consumed has caused a genetic change so much so that everyone's getting cancer uh, X-fold. One in 100 people carry the BRCA gene made famous by Angelina Jolie. If you don't know, she went ahead and found out she had this gene and she went ahead and lopped off her breasts, went and got double mastectomy. Uh, apparently it's linked or causes, it has a causal link to breast and ovarian cancers while roughly one in 300 are affected by Lynch syndrome, hereditary cause of bowel, womb, ovary, and pancreatic cancers. One in 350, one in 100. So this other one, this collectoral cancer is, uh, you know, 30 or 60 percent less likely to cause a problem an increase in survival rates among people with these genes means at population level the likelihood of having them is going up and maybe it's not even we're realizing that they have cancer maybe people were dying and we uh weren't knowing what they were dying of and it was actually uh cancer unlikely uh, research is also beginning to turn their sights on possible change to the microbiome to explain the trend so your mouth microbiome and your gut microbiome, what the heck are you talking about, Tiger? We're talking about bacteria here, okay? The stuff that eats and uh, causes things to break down within your body. Um, maybe that has changed. Why? Things we've ingested, perhaps, our environment. 
who knows and uh, there is a microbial pill it's called the poo pill where you like just pop a pill from someone who uh, has good butt gut butt gut microbium and you swallow that thing and it just starts to manifest inside of you and takes away the bad bacteria it's all about a balance right you have too much of the bad not enough of the good yeah so it is unknown the cause of this but we are seeing more patients getting abdominal cancers so there it is what else is going on cancer mystery why are more young adults being diagnosed with late stage tumors okay well what's going on here it was a shocking revelation heard around the world when on march 22nd the princess of wales Catherine middleton informed the public that she had cancer she's only 42 her diagnosis reflects the rapidly accelerating number of cancer cases among young adults younger than 50. what are the instigators of the increasingly alarming global surge of advanced aggressive cancers in young people is there anything you can do to protect yourself there are good questions but without definitive answers Data from the United Kingdom show that since the early 90s, cancer in people younger than 50 has risen 22%. In the United States, cancer in young people uh, younger than 40 has risen by a shocking 35% from uh, 75 to 2019. The phenomenon is so frequent that it has been given its own diagnosis, diagnostic category, early onset cancer. Some physicians are calling it an epidemic. 29 types of cancer, which uh, in people younger than 50 are increasing and accelerating pace. The steepest growth is seen in higher income countries, including the U.S. and Western European nations. So what the heck? Higher income countries, what have they been doing lately? You know, what have they been doing lately in the past couple of years? The higher income countries. Hmm. Bing. Did you just figure it out? There has been a dramatic increase in cancer screening in younger adults, decreasing cancer deaths, but uh, it does not explain the rise in cancer cases. More advanced tumors and more aggressive tumors are found in these younger adults compared to those 50 years and older. Screening would yield earlier stage cancers. Uh, these are young, healthy, active people, however, who eat well and have no genetic predisposition, so it cancels the previous theory. This includes Chadwick Boseman, an actor best known for his movie Black Panther. At age 39, he was diagnosed with stage 3 colon cancer. He continued to perform until he died four years later at 43. Scientists speculate that the earlier in life cancers are attributable at least in part to unhealthy habits, poor diet, low physical activity, and inefficient sleep. However, can't explain cancers in healthy young adults because they're active and they're getting lots of sleep. So what is it? That's classical and this is uh, contemporary. Digestive system growing concern. Here you go. Gastrointestinal, your GI tract, prevalent and aggressive. Recent study in Nature identified 14 cancers detected with increasing frequency. Okay, we're talking about colon, rectum, esophagus, stomach, bile duct, gallbladder, liver, and pancreas. Collectoral cancers spiked first. So what's going on? I have no idea. Did people put something in their bodies? In rich countries? That poor countries didn't, like Africa? Did you just figure it out? Cancer diagnosis in 30s and 40s is a unique stage of life challenges. These patients may have young families, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, so go ahead and get to your doctor and find out if you might have a high white blood cell count and start finding uh, your prayers because it seems like everyone's getting this cancer. Well, here's the ultimate uh, screw up of all time. And when you do screw up and you are uh, accountable, you resign. So uh, congratulations to this person for resigning, but unfortunately too late. Pro board chair and board member resign amid controversy over release of man accused of killing a boy and stabbing his mom. What? Well, Illinois Prisoner Review Board Chair Donald Shelton and board member Leanne Miller resigned on Monday after the board approved the parole of a man who's accused of stabbing his pregnant ex-girlfriend and killing her 11-year-old son a day after he was released from prison. The ultimate F-up. Yeah, we, we think this guy is completely rehabilitated and uh, he deserves to be paroled. And the next day he murders a child and stabs attempted murder of his uh, baby mother. While Governor J.B. Pritzker's office did not give a reason for either resignation, the governor's office confirmed that Miller conducted the recent parole hearing for Crossetti Brand, who is charged with stabbing his pregnant ex-girlfriend, Lateria Smith, and killing her 11-year-old son, Jaden Perkins. On the day after he was paroled, it was Miller who wrote the report recommending Brand's release. Way to go, Miller. But congratulations for having the, uh, the guts, the intestinal fortitude to resign in shame. Follow-up hearing. Uh, yeah, so it goes on to say that there was an email sent 
uh, saying that she was trying to get a restraining order against this guy. And uh, they were like, oh, we didn't get it. And then they looked and they investigated and they're like, yeah, you did get it. And someone called actually and they're like, <coughs> yeah, no mistakes made here. Uh, yeah, you're going to have to resign, lady. You totally F this up, okay? So you're taking the fall. You are the scapegoat. And there it is. Was it really her? If she had the information, would she have made the decision? Maybe an intern or an assistant uh, was sick that day and didn't review the emails. So anyway, uh, communication failures. That's what it is. Concerns about protective orders. So here's the deal. If he was a violent offender uh, and he uh, was in jail for violently injuring someone or harming someone, then they probably should never be let out of jail. That's my opinion. If you're going to go that far, pff, you're going to do it again, more than likely. You're violent. There's, there's hardly rehabilitating that, especially in jail. Good luck. Did he break his silence? Rapper says he's the victim of a witch hunt as he slams cops for cuffing his sons during sex trafficking raid and pleads his innocence. Aaron Dyer, an attorney for the rapper, Brooke, broke Combs' silence just 24 hours after the Homeland Security investigation. So uh, we covered this yesterday. Apparently uh, his plane flew to Antigua from uh, LAX, but uh, people were saying he might not even have been on it. He was walking around the airport in Miami. There was a gross overuse of military level force as search warrants were executed in Mr. Combs' residence. There is no excuse for excessive show of force and hostility exhibited by authorities or the way his children and employees were treated. Well, we don't know what his employees or children reacted like when these armed people came in the house. Perhaps they were unruly and they needed to be uh, sedated. Uh, let's not sedated, obviously. Uh, coughed. Whatever. Mr. Combs was never detained, but spoke to and cooperated with the authorities. He added, despite media speculation, neither Mr. Combs nor any of his family members have been arrested, nor has their ability to travel been restricted in any way. Combs was seen speaking to customs agents at an airport 15 minutes from his Miami Beach Monday uh, evening, but was never arrested. Yeah, so the reason why they went in and did what they did is so no one destroyed anything. Okay, so he's upset. Yeah, whatever. We'll keep you posted on what's going on with Diddy. Because P did it? Or P didn't? I don't know. I think it's a P, maybe. Junk science. Why Bay Area men are using Botox to enlarge their penises. Botox? In your... Uh, there it is. Bocox. Boom. Inspired by longevity guru Brian Johnson, men are turning to injections in hopes of adding size and enhancing penile performance. Here we have a uh, balloon uh, with some needles going into it. All right. Over the last 10 years, Dr. Joel Pash has injected dermal filler into around 600 Bay Area penises. The CEO of Upsize, a nationwide penile enlargement franchise that's headquartered in France's San Francisco's Stone Town Mall, Pash charges patients up to $10,800 for the XL package to increase their girth by 1 to 1.5 inches, a size boost that lasts for around two years. In general, length rather than girth tends to be at the top of the enhancer's to-do list, but up to this point, there was nothing simple or safe to be done, said Pash. But everything changed with the insertion of Brian Johnson into the qualified scene, quantified scene, sorry. Um, the suddenly everywhere multimillionaire longevity guru has developed a cult following through his attempts to cheat death via young blood transfusions and his blueprint diet among Bay Area, Bay Area biohackers. He's legit, said Jeff Tang, 26, the founder of Eat blueprint a meal delivery startup based on johnson's nutritional program he's serious about using data to build community and increase longevity on january 31st johnson posted his penis protocol on x 100 units of botox has been injected into his penis resulting in a one centimeter increase in flaccid length and increased hardness and sexual satisfaction 100 units i don't know anything about botox so is that like 100 injections or 100 uh, milliliters units whatever they use in that little syringe johnson's viral post inspired Pash, a Stanford University trained anesthesiologist to investigate the science behind these so-called Bocox injections. He'd known that Botox was being used experimentally for erectile dysfunction, but hadn't appreciated its shaft lengthening qualities. These aren't things that were in a textbook in medical school, he said. Two days post-tweet, Pash performed his first penile Botox treatment. There you go, he must have did quite a lot of research. Priced at $1,890. To date, he's treated 20 men with penile Botox in his San Francisco office, with more scheduled and references Johnson's on his uh, marketing material, penile lengthening biohack, as posted by Brian Johnson on X. Uh, Pash and the majority of penile plumpers use FDA-approved dermal fillers and neurotoxins off-label, a common approach among physicians who specialize in Botox treatments. However, these procedures can go wrong, and your, sorry, New Jersey internist had his license suspended after patients complained he botched their penile fillers in, in 2023. 
ProPublica published an expose on the penile implant business. So, hey, you know, if you feel uh, like you're inadequate and you want to go ahead and try lengthening, then uh, I would not advise going ahead and doing this. Because, hey, a doctor is just a guy who read a bunch of books, just like this guy who did two days of research and started jamming these needles into people's wieners. So, uh, yeah. Anyway. Don't do it. It's not worth it. Uh, world's first ever global emissions tax takes a step closer to reality. What the heck? They're going to start taxes on emissions? The International Maritime Organization held its latest round of negotiations to discuss how to move forward on the climate regulation of the shipping industry. Thank goodness I don't have a boat that carries cargo. Campaigners said growing support for the world's first ever global emissions levy meant it was now more likely to be adopted by the IMO next year. Uh, the UN is on the edge of adopting the world's first ever global emissions price, but the policy will only be as successful as countries make it to be. So, yeah, who's signing on for it? China? Unlikely. India? Doubtful. You know, like, that's how it is. They're the biggest polluters on Earth. And, you know, I'm not trying to be uh, a prejudiced racist or uh, whatever you want to call me for saying that uh, China and India are massive polluters. Just look at their coal emissions and how they increase and not decrease, how they're not part of any uh, environmental accord. They won't sign into it. Anyway, the revised policy backed by 175 countries targets uh, to slash shipping emissions by 30% by 2030 and by at least 70% by 2040 and to get net zero by the middle of the century. So 2050 is the year. No more gas cars by 2035. They're going to get rid of the gas boats. And I mean, this all could be possible with AI and the advent of all these new hydrogen fuel cells. It doesn't necessarily have to be electric. Not everything needs to be electric. As part of that agreement, the IMO agreed to implement some form of an emissions price in 2025. Seeking to help close that price gap between fossil fuels and green energy and to use the revenue generated to fund an equitable transition. However, there are other proposals to incorporate a potential levy as part of other measures. At least 14 countries continue to favor this approach. There you go. The UN is on the edge of adopting the world's first ever global emissions price, but the policy will only be blah, 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 blah. Same thing I already said. So there you go. Uh, decarbonizing shipping. Carbon. How much carbon's in the atmosphere? I think it's like 0.04%. I think. I could be wrong. It could be 0.4. But I think it's 0.04. And uh, they're trying to reduce it by how much? If you reduce it by like a full point, you know, now it's 0.3, then I think like the world will end. Or it'll be on the close cusp of ending. You can't do that. So all these like carbon pushers are like got to remove carbon. They don't even understand how much carbon's in the atmosphere. They don't understand anything, okay? They're headline readers and alarmists, and all they do is bark and howl until you back down, because that's what dogs do. And then they'll attack you, personally. All right, what's going on at the border? Let's find out. This guy here is down there, and he's looking at a migrant camp. Just east of Sassabee, I want to show you what it looks like here and what the situation is right now. Uh, you can see all these tents are just along the side of the border wall then over here we have volunteers with humane borders and then these migrant families just showed up within the last hour this family's from mexico hola <laughs> Yeah, come get that American pie, baby. New York, start giving out those debit cards. 1400 bucks a month. So they're just here um, waiting for Border Patrol to uh, come and apprehend them so they can make their asylum claim. How about you made it? And uh, conditions out here are pretty Well, tough. how can you be from Mexico and have an asylum claim? And this is one of the tents. Old mattress here on the ground. Rough. Hey, and I'm not saying, like... They shouldn't be let in, or maybe their life is terrible in Mexico. But, like, you know, typically you have to seek asylum before you enter the country, okay? And, uh, you know, I don't know what's going on them. They just look like a couple of regular people trying to get a piece of the American pie. As long as they do it right, that's fine. Seek asylum, get in properly, whatever, that's cool. Don't be walking across the border and going and getting them ducats of a New York City. Chicago veterinarian, dog show judge charged with child porn. FBI says he boasted of drugging and abusing multiple kids. All right, so here we have a, the ultimate sick individual, the worst vet ever. 
A Chicago area veterinarian who uh, has judged national dog shows was arrested Friday on child porn charges and accused of chatting about planning to sexually assault his newborn son. Like, this dude has got a warm place down south, if you know what I'm saying. Adam Stafford King, a veterinarian ophthalmologist from Elburn, is charged with one count of knowingly distributing child pornography. He's a staff ophthalmologist at MedVet Chicago, a veterinary clinic in Avondale, and get a good look at the creepiest vet on earth. Just look at those beady eyes. Just, oh my God. And that's his mug shot, people. Uh, King is also a, a Havanese dog breeder. A dog show judge who frequently travels to dog shows around the country and had been scheduled to serve as a judge in the 2024 Westminster Kennel Club dog show. There you go. According to the charges against him, FBI began investigating King in October as part of a child pornography investigation in New York. Agents learned a subject in the New York case had been chatting with King using the dating app Scruff and the messaging app Telegram. And King had sent that person several videos of child porn. After that person was arrested, FBI agents posed as him online and continued to chat with him. During those chats, King used the handle Perv Chai Guy and wrote that he prefers children under age 10. In one message, King wrote, Zero to nine, my fave. B N G, though prefer B, according to the charges. And there you go. You can go ahead and grab your pail and start vomiting because that's what we live in. This is the world we live in. Like he's going to molest his own child? Like what the f is going on? Lock them up. Or worse. Taliban vowed to start stoning women to death in public for adultery in Afghanistan. A supreme leader blasts the West's support for women's rights. Well, here you go. The ultimate dichotomy. You know? Old world versus new world. We've got the West totally embracing gender ideology, gender affirmation surgeries, abortions, like, just like... Give us more of all that stuff. The immorality is off the charts. And then you have these people over here who are the opposite, completely the opposite end of the spectrum, where if you do something wrong, then you get murdered. If you steal, then you lose your hand. You know what I mean? You're going to commit adultery, one of the worst sins of all time, uh, betraying the trust of your uh, partner, especially if it's a parent then yeah, they're going ahead and stoning them. They're going to soon start stoning women to death in public, the radical group's supreme leader announced as he declared war against Western democracy. Addressing Western officials in a voice message broadcast on State TV Saturday, Mullah Hibatula Akhunzada called the Western human rights defenders representatives of the devil. You say it's a violation of women's rights when we stone them to death, but we will soon implement the punishment for adultery, he told the West in his harshest comments since taking over Afghanistan in 2021. We will flog women in public. We will stone them to death in public, he announced. These are all against your democracy, but we will continue doing it. We both say we defend human rights. We do it as God's representatives, and you do it as the devil's. Wow. I mean, what a, uh, what a comparison there. You are treating women like animals. Are these your rights? Afghanistan State TV, now controlled by the Taliban, airs voice messages claiming to be from Akunzada, who has never been seen in public. Interesting. The Wizard of Akhunzada, in a further affront to international advocacy for women's rights, Akhunzada criticized the calls for such rights as contradictory to the Taliban's interpretation of Islamic Sharia law. Do women want the rights that Westerners are talking about? Mm, I mean, they would probably rather them than the ones that you guys are forcing on them, but that doesn't make it better. They are against Sharia and clerics' opinions, the clerics who toppled Western democracy asserted. One is God's league and another one is the devil's, and we are on God's side, he said, he claimed. Yeah, I don't know about stoning to death is maybe the best way to do it. The punishments are similar to those during the previous rule of Afghanistan in the early 90s. Akhazada called for the Taliban foot soldiers to be resilient in opposing women's rights and said the war against Western democracy and values will continue for decades to come. Yeah, okay, so here's the deal. I'm neither for or against either of these ideologies, okay? I don't care. Unless it's, like, literally being forced. Like, you know, over there... I'm down for women's rights. I think women should be allowed to do whatever they want as long as they're not hurting anybody. Do I think abortion is right? I think if your dad rapes you and you're stuck with a child inside of you, then that's something to be considered, you know? Or you're raped by a migrant. That's something to be considered. You know what I mean? Like, likely, I would, if it happened to my daughter, I would be like, yeah, I don't want that demon seed in my child either. Okay? Fair enough. But the other side of it is that, uh, like, less than 1% of abortions are... Uh, non-elective, okay? 
meaning that like I'm doing it because I have to or I should. Not I'm doing it because I got uh, laid last night and the dude blew his load in me. So I'm just going to go uh, get an abortion a month later because my period didn't come. And how many dudes did you do that with? Which one is, like, if that's what you're doing and you're relying on abortions to avoid uh, birth because you're promiscuous, then I don't believe in that. I think that's absolutely stupid. Uh, women being equal as men? Yeah, in most cases. But with regards to strength and physicality, the answer is 100% no. So women and men should not be competing against each other. And that's why, historically, we've never had a man versus women league. Uh, who is it? The uh, tennis player, Serena Williams, came out and said, yeah, one time at practice, she played like the 180th guy ranked on the men's team, and he roasted her. He absolutely destroyed her. And there it is. She's the best, and she's a beast. All right, Canada run by complete idiots, Kevin O'Leary says, of Trudeau government. Yeah, I think a lot of people will agree with that, except the, the liberal fanatics. Shark Tank and the self-styled Mr. Wonderful Kevin O'Leary had some choice words for the total incompetence exhibited by the federal liberal cabinet. In his characteristically blunt style, O'Leary called for Trudeau to be fired on news anchor Daniela Cambone's podcast. While they covered various economic and political topics, O'Leary's most critical comments came during a discussion about Canada. Look at the natural resources the country has per capita. It's one of the richest countries on earth run by complete idiots. Yeah. O'Leary explained that it's vital that Trudeau be thanked for his service and removed from office while saying that Trudeau was the worst manager in Canada's history. He's not the only person that O'Leary blamed. Total incompetency underneath him in the cabinet seats. Total incompetency in almost every mandate. Absolutely the worst I've ever seen. The very, very, very worst, said O'Leary. Can Canadians are finally starting to wake up and realize just how poorly their country is being run, O'Leary explained. He said despite his criticisms, he wants to support Canada and is a big believer in its potential. While well, speaking about one of Canada's greatest resources, mining, O'Leary said investors can't get anything done in Canada. He was responding to a question about how Canadian billionaire Pierre Lassonde and Frank Guistra were vocal with a media campaign urging the feds to invest pensions to fund Canadian mining, saying that mining industry has been lost to foreign giants in China. Good job, little potato. O'Leary said that with the revolutionization of AI, data centers are needed across the world. They require approximately 100 megawatts of energy to operate, according to Canadian businessmen. He added that Canada is only 8% of what it needs, and the average AI data center is about $3.6 billion project. Canada should have at least five of them. There are none of them going on right now because you can't get energy permits. That's controlled by Trudeau's government and uh, uh, Stephen Guilbeault, who thinks we shouldn't build roads anymore and, and carbon is, is death. Anyway, there you have it. Kevin O'Leary with the real burger, the hot juicy beef right there. Sigma Tiger, like and subscribe, get this mask off. 10K is the number we're looking for. Sigma Tiger, signing off.